A mother's world crumbles down when she loses her only daughter. But a year later, when she sees her walking down the street, she discovers a frightening secret. In a forgotten corner of Texas, where the world seemed to revolve around the sun, Clementine's farm stretched out like a picturesque mosaic of colors and smells. It was a scene of pure rural charm. Expanses of green land, red barns, and an old tractor that groaned at every start, but despite its protests, never failed. Clementine, a woman with strong features and sunburnt skin, ran the place with determination and tenderness. Since her husband Silas had been taken away by cruel tuberculosis when their daughter Gemma was just 10 years old, the responsibility of maintaining the farm had fallen on her shoulders. It wasn't an easy task, but the woman had a strength inside her that drove her forward with each new day. At her side was the ever-present Gemma, the young girl, now 18, with her big smile and lively eyes, was her mother's joy. The girl was like the rising sun, bringing warmth and light, even on the coldest, cloudiest days. Both shared such a deep connection that it was almost as if they breathed the same air. From an early age, Gemma showed an unwavering love for the farm and everything it represented. The sound of cattle mooing in the distance, the fresh smell of freshly cut hay and the feel of the earth beneath her feet were all things she adored. Her love for the place where she grew up was evident in her sparkling eyes every time she looked out over the fields that stretched out before her. They grew a variety of produce, including wheat, corn, tomatoes, peppers, and apples, as well as having a few cows to milk. Gemma, with her gentle and careful touch, also kept an herb garden, her skillful hands worked miracles in the kitchen, transforming the farm's vegetables into meals that would make anyone's mouth water. During the harvest season, mother and daughter would load up Silas's old truck with the vegetables from the farm and head to the nearby town to sell them at the local fairs. The bright red apples, juicy tomatoes, and golden corn were the main attractions at their food stand, which was always surrounded by a crowd of satisfied customers. On quieter days, the two would meet on the porch at dusk, watching the sun set over the horizon, painting the sky orange and pink. They shared stories, laughter, and sometimes tears, creating precious memories that could never be replaced. Clementine and Gemma had an unbreakable bond. Together they faced life's adversities, from the sadness of losing Silas to the daily challenges of maintaining the farm. They were more than mother and daughter. They were partners, confidants, and best friends. The father's absence was a hard blow for the family, but the two found comfort in each other and in their beloved farm, which, despite all the setbacks, remained their refuge and home. Then, one fine day, the sky was clear, and the fresh air and breeze blew gently across the fields. Gemma had woken up early, as usual, and after breakfast, went out to start her day's work in the fields. Her mother watched her as she walked towards the fields, her daughter's smile shining like the rising sun. Clementine called out to the girl, saying, Careful, dear. Don't forget to check the tractor before you use it. She turned and smiled at her mother. I always do, Mom. She replied, Don't worry. I'll be back by noon. And left. However, as lunchtime approached, the girl never returned. The woman, thinking that something had gone wrong with the equipment, decided to go to check on her daughter. But then a sound of metal clashing against metal echoed around the farm, followed by an agonizing scream that made Clementine run desperately in the direction of the noise. When she arrived at the scene, she found a terrifying scene that made her heart stop. Gemma lying next to the tractor, an iron bar piercing her abdomen and lots and lots of blood. No, my daughter! The woman screamed in despair and ran to the girl. Mom, I... I... Gemma tried to say but her voice faded as life was drained from her body. The mother held her daughter in her arms, crying and begging God not to take her. No, no, no. Please, God, don't take my little girl. Please don't take her. She repeated through sobs and tears. Unfortunately, her pleas were not answered. Mom, I love you. Those were the poor girl's last words before being interrupted by absolute nothingness. The light in her eyes went out, and Clementine was left hugging her daughter's cold body. Gemma's death plunged the farm into a darkness of mourning and sadness. The house, 
once full of laughter and joy, became a silent and a dark place. That mother felt like a part of her heart had been ripped out, leaving an open wound that would never heal. The loss was an overwhelming blow. Gemma had been Clementine's light, the reason for her life. Without her, the woman felt lost and empty, as if she were wandering in a land of shadows. For weeks, Clementine hardly left the house. Her pain was so intense that it seemed physically unbearable. She spent her days sitting on the porch, looking out over the fields, waiting to see Gemma return back home, laughing and waving at her. But she never came back. Tears flowed nonstop from that woman's sad eyes. She wished she had gone to her daughter's place. She retreated into herself and did nothing else. A year later, with the pantry almost empty and the bills piling up because the woman had spent the last few months not producing or selling anything, Clementine knew she had to return to the city and build up her stand again. It was a task that Gemma used to perform with enthusiasm and that Mother's heart ached at having to face the city without her. But it was the only way to make ends meet. And so, with a heavy heart and a lost look in her eyes, Clementine set off in the direction of the city, leaving behind the silent farm and the empty fields that used to be full of her dear daughter's laughter and love. It was a busy day in town. The market was full of people of all ages, buying and selling, chatting and laughing, and the woman had already set up her food stand full of products again. However, what she was about to see would change her life forever. Across the street, a young figure with a tired countenance and expressive eyes walked past. Clementine blinked, rubbed her eyes, thinking she was dreaming, or worse, going mad. But when she looked again, the young woman was still there, looking at a fruit stand. She was wearing simple clothes. Her hair was messy and shone in the sun like a golden crown, just like Gemma's. It was her daughter, walking, alive. Could it be? That mother felt as if a dagger had pierced her heart. Her mind was in chaos, a storm of fear, disbelief, and sudden longing. She stood up abruptly, leaving her stand and the surprised customers behind, and began to cross the street, her eyes fixed on the girl. It can't be... She thought as she walked, the people around her looking like blurred shadows. She, she's dead. I saw her die. That, that's impossible. She was almost there when the young woman turned a corner, disappearing from sight. Clementine ran, but when she arrived at the scene, the girl had disappeared, like a ghost. Over the next few days, the mother saw her daughter several times in the city, always dressed differently, always alone. Whenever she tried to approach her, she disappeared into the crowd. Clementine spent sleepless nights with thoughts swirling around in her mind. Is she a ghost, a creation of my troubled mind, or is she real? And determined to get it out in the open, one day the woman returned to town. But she didn't even set up her stand. She simply sat on a bench in the square, her eyes constantly scanning the crowd, looking for her daughter. And then, as always, she appeared. The mother got up and began to follow her, her heart pounding wildly. Gemma? She called out but the girl wouldn't turn around. Gemma. When she finally reached her, the poor woman hesitated. It, it's her, she thought, looking at her daughter's blonde hair. That mother, gasping for breath, raised her hand, but was afraid that it would pass through the young woman, confirming that she was, in fact, a ghost. Come on, Clementine, she thought. Then she gathered her courage and touched her. Gemma. The touch on the girl's shoulder was... So solid, real. The woman felt a wave of surprise, followed by overwhelming relief. She wasn't crazy. Her daughter was real. But, but how? When the girl turned around, Clementine felt her world crumble. There she was, her little girl, Gemma. The shock was so great that the poor mother's legs went weak, and she had to hold on to keep from falling. She looked into the girl's eyes, the same expressive eyes she had seen for the last 18 years and she couldn't hold back the tears. She had found her daughter, or so she thought. Crying, the woman threw herself into the girl's arms, hugging her tightly. Gemma, my daughter. She sobbed, her voice little more than a whisper. The girl, however, remained rigid in her arms, visibly confused and frightened. Uh, I'm sorry, but who is Gemma? She asked. My name is Chloe, ma'am. I think you have me confused with someone else. But Clementine didn't listen. She was trapped in her own world of relief and ecstasy, 
believing she had her daughter back and saying, Gemma or my daughter. She continued to hold Chloe until the young woman gently but firmly pulled her away. Ma'am, I really think you're confusing me. I'm not that Gemma. Chloe said with a worried look on her face. Are you all right? At that moment, as she looked at the girl's face and saw the total indifference to her feelings as a mother, as she realized that there wasn't a shred of a daughter's love in her, she once again felt her world come crashing down. If that wasn't Gemma, who was she then? And why was she exactly the same as her daughter? Picking up her handbag, Clementine began to rummage through its contents, looking for a specific photo. Finally, with trembling hands, she found it. A photo of her and Gemma taken a few months before the accident. She showed the photo to Chloe, who took it with hesitant hands. Gemma, you're Gemma. And pointed to the girl in the picture. As soon as her eyes landed on the picture, Chloe opened them wide in surprise and shock. In the photo, she saw a girl, exactly like her, smiling next to that strange woman who had hugged her a few seconds ago. But, but that's me. She whispered perplexed. I mean, it's not me. How is that possible? Clementine shook her head. That's Gemma, my daughter. She, she died in an accident a year ago, said the mother, her voice full of emotion. The girl looked at the woman, then at the photo, and again at Clementine. Her mind was spinning, trying to absorb the information. And now, things seemed to make some sense, because both the girl in the photo and Clementine looked very similar physically. Then she began to tell her own story. How she had been taken to an orphanage when she was only two years old, after her mother Lorraine had died of tuberculosis. How she had been separated from her home and taken to the orphanage to avoid being infected with the disease. How she spent a lonely and sad childhood, without being adopted because no one wanted the daughter of the woman with such disease. Clementine listened to the girl's story with a growing sense of disbelief and shock. She looked at Chloe, now seeing her with new eyes. It wasn't Gemma who was there, but Chloe. It really was Chloe. But when she mentioned the name of the woman she called Mother Lorraine, something in her mind exploded. The revelation was devastating and, at the same time, miraculous. The farmer felt overwhelming relief, intense happiness mixed with deep pain. She had found something she never thought she lost. On the day her daughter Gemma was born, Clementine had the help of her friend Lorraine. In those days, it was common for women to give birth in their own homes, with the assistance of a midwife. Lorraine was that woman, having helped many mothers in the small town. And even though everyone said that Clementine's belly was bigger than normal for a single pregnancy, after assessing it, her friend quickly ruled out the possibility of twins, insisting that the extra size was only due to the woman's health and strength. Throughout my pregnancy, Lorraine took very good care of me, said Clementine, looking at Chloe. At this point, the two were already sitting on the bench in the square because the girl had agreed to talk to the woman, as she was also intrigued. She kept reassuring me that everything was fine, that I was strong and that my baby was healthy, continued the mother. On the day of the birth, Lorraine arrived early, bringing with her a calm and reassuring smile. Clementine remembered the pain, the sweat, and the tears, but she also remembers the midwife's calm face and her gentle words of encouragement. Lorraine was an incredible midwife. She was with me through every step of the way, except she gave me something to drink. She said it was to ease the pain. I got a bit dizzy and I remember some flashbacks, said the woman. When Gemma was finally born, I was so exhausted, so emotional. I held her in my arms and felt so happy. But what Clementine didn't know was that Lorraine had been hiding a terrible secret. The midwife had given Gemma to the woman but had kept another baby hidden. As she had given her a tranquilizer, Clementine had become a little doped up and couldn't remember having a second baby. The friend had quietly cut the umbilical cord and wrapped the second little girl in a blanket before the mother could notice. I always knew that Lorraine had become a midwife because she could never have children. She wanted to at least help other women with their babies. The woman swallowed before saying, She took you, Chloe, now I'm sure of it. And she told how Lorraine simply disappeared after the delivery, leaving her with Gemma and her husband in that empty house. She remembered feeling strangely incomplete, but attributed it to the exhaustion of childbirth. 
She never saw her friend again after that day. And now, years later, the truth was revealed. Lorraine had stolen her daughter and ran away with her. She had deceived that poor mother and caused her unspeakable pain. Chloe, I, I'm so sorry. Clementine whispered, tears streaming down her cheeks. I didn't know. If I had known, I would have looked for you. I would have done anything to find you. Chloe, the daughter she never knew she had, was right there in front of her. And now, more than ever, she was determined to look after her, to love her and protect her, just as she had done with Gemma. The girl, still holding the photo of her sister's mother, hugged her and cried a lot. Mom. It was strange for her to say that word, but it felt so right. I always wanted to find you. The girl knew that something had always been missing in her life. She felt like someone was missing, like she was the other half of something. It was about Gemma. After learning that she had a twin sister, it was as if the pieces of the puzzle had fallen into place. Now she felt complete, despite the loss of a sister she didn't even know she had. And so Clementine invited the girl to visit the farm, the place where their roots had been entangled from the start. And with a sense of urgency to find a refuge, a home, and most importantly, a family that would welcome her, Chloe didn't think twice about accepting the invitation. From that moment on, the farm, which had previously been immersed in sadness and longing, took on new colors with Chloe's arrival. Her presence brought with it a new energy, a renewal, and filled the deafening void that Gemma had left behind when she left. The mother felt, as if by some miracle, that a fraction of her lost family had been rescued, while the little girl discovered the comfort and maternal affection she had longed for. The son, which previously seemed to have lost its brightness, once again illuminated the fields more vibrantly. Mother and daughter found solace and mutual affection, slowly healing the wounds of a turbulent past. And so, the two prepared for a life full of promise and new opportunities. United by pain and now by love, they began to write a new chapter in their lives, where hope prevailed and an unexpected union blossomed. If you liked the story, Surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss and see you in the next story.